I am the voice of Snowbird Nation, Mike Searcy. Hey there, everybody. This Welcome back to Snowbird Nation's training and development series. Uh, my name is Steve Richardson. I'm here with Dr. Mike Searcy. And today, what we're going to discuss is oh, another scary one, Mike, uh, divorce. I divorce see. lawyers and divorce. And how does that pertain to real estate? So I, I wanted to start off here with a, with a little joke. A little joke. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> what and the joke is what do divorce lawyers do best i don't know steve what do divorce lawyers do best well they can open up your pocketbook and separate you from your money <laughs> just right off the bat man <laughs> pretty wow. good yeah so divorce lawyers are like surgeons yes they're very they're very surgically inclined <laughs> take, take it away Take oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. All right. So, so, you know, on, on a more serious note, sure. um, thinking about, you know, because it happens, right? I mean, you know, you know, we're, we're you know, we, we buy property, we're, you know, a lot of married couples out there that buy property, and then they get themselves in a situation where, uh oh, um, they're headed, uh, you know, love on the rocks, as, uh, as Neil Diamond once put it. Okay. <laughs> and, yeah, you know, yeah. so how does divorce, how does divorce affect your real estate needs? I think that's the biggest question that we have. Well, uh, that, and it's a great question. Um, first and foremost, I think one of the things we need to recognize that in most states uh, throughout the country, throughout the United States, most states uh, recognize the idea of uh, joint marital property. Um, and community property or and the like. And thus properties, if there weren't if there weren't properties in the name of one of the individuals prior to the marriage, for example, then oftentimes, and, and there isn't a prenuptial agreement suggesting, you know, what what was yours before stays yours solely, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go ahead and just kind of um, uh, dismiss that concept for a moment because you know, it, it often we often say in the real estate world, and we've been saying this for generations, that it takes one to buy and two to sell. Yeah, when we're yeah. talking about a marriage and real estate in particular. One of the one of the parties to the marriage can buy a property if they have the funds, if they have the money, but if they buy it, oftentimes during the time that they're married, legally it belongs to both. And so, just because the one purchased doesn't necessarily mean the one can just dispose of the property at the same time. Now it actually takes both people to sign off and, and sell the property. Or, you know, if, unless they do something, you know, out of the ordinary, uh, when they bought the property and do a disclaimer deed of some kind where one actually bought and the spouse actually signs off saying, I want nothing to do with it, it's not mine. Um, but one to buy, two to sell. But when, this, when, when the statistics hit, you know, marriage and statistics, uh, they don't go together, right? The statistics are against um, successful marriages. Let's just face yeah, it. Let's just face facts. Yeah. And so, you know, if we're still at a better than 50% uh, divorce rate, um, you know, the, the old joke I've always heard is, you know what the leading cause of divorce is? Marriage. Um, but ha having said that, and, 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 I, and I apologize if, uh, you know, if that's a little too sensitive at this point, but let's, let's talk about that for a minute. It happens. And um, as it happens, it's, it's, it's a very difficult and emotional situation for everybody. Now, as far as what real estate needs are, typically the property both are currently living in needs to be determined how it's going to be disposed of. And when I say that, it can be disposed of in a couple of different ways. Um, one party might take it, but then it typically means that party has to somehow pay half the equity or a portion agreed upon by the courts and the lawyers, et cetera, um, pay that portion that they would owe to the spouse to send the spouse on their merry way to find another property. If that's the case, the real estate need is one house for the exiting spouse, one, one property, something somewhere for that person to rent or buy to live. Right. 
more often than not in today's day and age, the money just isn't there for one spouse to pay off the other spouse and send them on their way, so to speak. And it may be that neither of them wants the property that, they, that they've been living in for so many years because of what? Bad memories, just yeah. bad, bad, you know, it was a money pit to begin with, whatever it might be. They have come to the conclusion they want to get rid of both. I mean, they both want to get rid of the house. Yeah, if the that's house. the case, then there has to be, um, you know, the, the first real estate opportunity and need is to sell that house. The second is, where are each of those spouses going to go? Now, from a real estate perspective, um, often it means sell one, buy two. And am I buying two in the same area? You know, because we're not really moving away from each other. Or is one moving across country as, as part of, you know, their own personal restart to life? And so from a real estate perspective, it comes down to, um, you know, what, what, you know, get rid of one buy two. And so there can be as many as three, maybe more, but as you know, commonly three different real estate transactions in the process. Wow. Wow. So that's, you know, it's a, it's a good breakdown. And it is a very serious issue and, and, and certainly, you know, can, can devastate and, and it's also very tough on the participants, yeah. on, the, on the sellers. Um, it's going to be, you know, you know, a lot of conflicting feelings going back and forth. Well, let's so, talk about, let's talk about the conflicting feelings issue, because that is a very big issue when it comes to divorce. Oftentimes, if it's an acrimonious divorce, meaning the two parties, the two spouses are not getting along, they're right. not signing paperwork together, things like this, then sometimes the, each one of them might have their own attorney. And their attorneys may already be working with a, a, a divorce court judge and, or an arbiter. And it is oftentimes the arbiter or the judge who has to make the final decisions on when are we going to sell? At what price are we going to sell? What offers are going to be potentially accepted? Because sometimes, you know, one spouse or the other spouse thinks that they're somehow getting the short end of a deal or they feel like they're kind of got their situation together. They can hold out a little longer than the other one. So they're going to kind of kind of uh, make it much more difficult on the other spouse by stalling or disagreeing or not signing and things like this. So depending upon if, if it's a if it's a divorce where people are parting a ways and as friendly and as a um, uh, easy non-contested way as possible, then this sometimes becomes easy that they all just kind of sit together and, and, and do what they need to do. Um, right. if, if not, then sometimes, and, and they're contesting everything along the way, then oftentimes it must go to a third party. Got it. Got it. So that begs the question, you know, you know, here we are, we're, we're real estate agents, we're realtors. Yeah. Uh, how could, how could uh, us as realtors, as Snowbird Nation real estate agents, how can we help um, you know, somebody going through a divorce um, with their real estate needs. You know, one of the things that we often have to re remember is that when you are licensed as a real estate agent in nearly every state in the country, there are seven fiduciary duties that come along with it. Advocacy to the clients. You are to be their advocate. Reasonable care and in this case, reasonable care and accounting of all of the things that you're doing will be challenged and yes. looked at a little bit more scrutiny, you know, with more scrutiny. Disclosure, complete disclosure of the process. This is what the house is really, you know, this is what we believe the house to be worth. This is how we've come up with our valuation. Pure transparency is so important so that people aren't thinking you're doing this because you're trying to get away with something. You're on that other person's side, this side, my side, et cetera. Um, confidentiality of what it is, you know, when, when I'm told things about that are confidential about a, 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 an agreement about the property itself with respect to the real estate transaction, you must keep certain things confidential in order to also be the best advocate. That's right. When we talk about obedience, I need to law, be lawfully obedient to the transaction and the real estate law and thus who make it very clear who I'm taking instructions from as an agent. As your agent, am I taking instructions from 
one spouse or the other spouse? And does the alternative spouse know about it? Am I taking instructions from one attorney or the other attorney as is taking the lead? And does the other attorney and the spouses know about it? Am right. I taking my instructions from the, uh, the judge or the arbiter? And does every, is everybody, I mean, so complete transparency and loyalty. And then of course your final and seventh um, fiduciary duty is accountability because you will be held accountable. So yeah. what does that mean as an agent? It means patience. It means diligence. It means persistence. It means being willing to keep open lines of communication in all directions. Yep. It means in some cases playing therapist because you're, you're gonna wind up getting an earful of things you'd never thought you'd necessarily have to as a real estate consultant, as a real estate advisor, as their realtor, as their real estate professional. And it means being a professional at all levels above and beyond where your feelings may, may actually interject because your feelings have no place in this situation other than to help them reach their goal so that they can move on with their lives. Yeah, yeah. Well put, man. I, you know, and, and the seven fiduciary responsibilities, it's, it's, um, it really does apply here. So any final thoughts that you have on, on divorces? You know, um, just kind of a, a, a final thought with respect to um, the opportunity that exists for the compassionate realtor. Divorce is big business for attorneys. You know, that was part of our, you know, part of the in, initial comment you had to begin with. Um, it's yeah. big business for attorneys. It can also be a specialization for compassionate realtors. Realtors who are fair-minded, understand the score, willing to take the phone calls, will be available to answer those phone calls and stay on top of things. They will be, um, they will need to have the patience to take the brunt of emotions where sometimes people are taking out the emotions of anger and things like this out on them that they're not angry at you. They're angry at the situation. But if you respond as if they were angry at you, you're going to wind up harming your business more than helping. Um, if, you're, if you're an agent and you are specifically interested in this kind of market, then my suggestion is you network with real estate, uh, with uh, divorce attorneys. You network if, you're in, if, you're, if your abilities and your, your social connections allow, network with the judges on the, on the uh, divorce circuit. Network with the people who might be in a position to recommend you as a professional. Network with the people who know you as a level-headed and calm person. And I'm making the presumption, of course, that you are. And if you're not a level-headed and calm person, this may not be the market you want to work in or specialize in. Um, because, you know, just like a lot of things, this, you're, you're dealing with crisis and you're selling in crisis but you're still responsible for trying to be the best advocate you can be. And that, that is what often separates professional real estate consultants and the realtors that nah, are variable are variably trained or not trained at all. That well said, thank you, Mike. And um, thank you everybody. If this uh, video does resonate with you, you know, please get back to the person that, that sent you the video. Uh, let them know. There is a number that at the bottom of your screen, um, you know, give us a call, contact us if you have any questions concerning um, this topic or any other topic. Uh, Snowbird Nation, we're, we're willing to help and willing to take care of any, any of your real estate needs. And agents, if you're interested in actually learning a little bit more about what we do here at Snowbird Nation, call us. We would be so delighted to have a conversation with you uh, or, or the person who sent you this video um, because, you know, being the best agents we can be to help our clients and all those seven fiduciary duties, recognizing how each of those actually interacts. That's what we're about. And we'd like to show you how to do it, you know, or at least help you reach level up to your next level of, of game. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, everybody. Remember, Snowbird Nation, where your real estate dreams take flight. We'll talk to you next time.